Welcome to Full Scope, a podcast designed to analyze the games that we love, headlines and music, and the movies we can't forget. I'm your host, Winsor Burns, by my counterpart, Savon Morris. How's it going, man? It's going good, man. It's, it's good to get back and talk some sports. It's been a while, for me anyways. <laughs> man, sometimes within these episodes, it feels like months, and it's like, oh man, like we actually recorded last week, it feels like two years. <laughs> no, for real. No, seriously, bro. Well, we have a lot of topics to get into for this one. Obviously, NFL topics, um, NBA topics with the in-season tournament, which which we all know Savon loves. Savon loves some album reviews. In the second half, we're going to do a review of the Godfather Coda with a special guest. And to start off with thoughts on Dallas's you know, dominant win versus Philadelphia, the Cowboys <coughs> won 33-13 at home, and Dak Prescott threw for two touchdowns. They also pulled even in the division with their 15th consecutive home victory. And you know, this is the type of game where everything was clicking for them offensively. Obviously, like with, with Philadelphia, they haven't looked look like the same team the past couple of weeks. Yeah. What did you see from this game? And is this more so more of what Dallas is doing or maybe Philly struggles? It's both, right? So we talked about this last week. What This was my game of the week, what I was looking forward to because of what happened to the Eagles against the 49ers. The exact same thing happened, especially on the defensive side. I thought it was – I didn't want to say it was a fluke, but I did think they were going to – clean up some mistakes the running game was working for Dallas they were yeah. I don't know what type of defense it was throwing against uh Dak Prescott looked like cover two a little bit middle of the field was wide open a lot of misdirection the, the Cowboys I will give them hats off to them the play calling was stellar Mike McCarthy did a phenomenal job preparing these guys for uh the Philadelphia Eagles and again I think the one thing I took away from the Eagles offense the running game is still mating that was that's their Number one ML. source of yeah, moving the football and opening up the pass, open up play action, giving uh the the Jalen Hurt opportunity to to settle himself and not be able to throw as much because of his plague and injuries. A look exactly the same against Dallas that they did the 49ers. I'm thinking, like, what's going on? <laughs> Something has to change. Something has changed. Either 49ers Cowboys are just better than them the second half of the season. Or the Eagles have shot themselves in the foot so many times and haven't played a complete football game where they're starting the mistakes that they, uh, you know, capitalize on and kind of maneuvered around in certain games. Now are they're 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 it's their Achilles heel. So I'm worried about yeah. the Philadelphia Eagles. Jalen Hurts still not 100. percent That running game with Gainwell and DeAndre Swift is non-existent. I mean, they still have the, the big time wide receivers on the outside with with uh, Devontae Smith and and AJ and AJ <laughs> look human. Shout yeah. out to Gilmore. Shout out to the old school having a uh, resurgence. <laughs> yeah, having a resurgence. You know, thank AJ Brown for talking crap, you know, to him before the game. But yeah. I think that was the difference. They took away a lot of big throws uh, again. Jalen Hurts holds the ball way too long, indecisive where he wants to go. They need to clean this up. Before the playoffs, I they obviously they make the playoffs, but they need to clean. They need to start playing complete football games to be able to go and win and, and make a run to go to the Super Bowl. Now they have me second guessing my pick. Uh -oh. Second guessing? <laughs> yes, bro. What I've seen the past two weeks with prominent teams who have the capability of going and making the playoffs, they have been just all, all sorts. This offensive line is another one. I mean, it just didn't look like Eagles have is is ready to to make a run for the Super Bowl, and it and starts with Jalen Hurts. And that's the thing; it's like who they're losing to. They're losing to the teams that they're going to have to compete against in the playoffs. Yeah, Forty ers Cowboys. It's not like you're losing to like these mediocre teams, and you're like you're you're playing to the level of your competition. It's like no, you're playing against like some of the best teams in the NFC, and you're not bringing it. That's what concerns me the most. Is when yes. I saw you know obviously that San Francisco game that was one where. People were like, okay, may, maybe this, this was one where San Francisco thoroughly outplayed them, but San, Philly's going to bounce back the next week. No, this is this is no. back to back weeks yeah. of they their worst games of the year. Worst games of the year. This is the running stats, right? DeAndre Swift had thirty nine yards. Game will have twenty eight. Jalen Hurts had thirty. Yeah. DeAndre Swift is normally like ninety to one hundred twenty yards a game. Big pops. Right. Now the defensive coordinator has to bring everybody down. Now we got A.J. Brown, all these guys going deep, comeback yeah. routes, slant routes. They're backing up. So, And then hats off to Dak Prescott, right? Oh, Dak yeah. Prescott is playing Lights real out. football, right? This is the first year in a while 
that we have to give this man his flowers. <laughs> Got to. <laughs> is he? Uh, I-, I was going to ask this. Is he MVP? No. No. Who's in that MVP. conversation for you? Because like people are Tyreek saying, like has to be. There's Tyreek, never been a Brock wide receiver. Purdy. No Brock Purdy, bro. No <laughs> Brock Purdy. How? How is he not in that mix? Because bro? he has fifty thousand <laughs> weapons that has yak, bro. What's you what's gotta, one of the best yaks? No, it's not. <sighs> Well, it's a you know. Okay, better all right, all right, all right. I'll you let know you get, better. I'll let you talk about the Tyree Kill, Tyree Kill MVP. No, no, I'm just saying, bro. You, know you really think receiver. Brock Purdy? Brock Purdy should be top. I'm two not saying that. Everything. I'm not saying that's that. what I, you're I, insinuating. Dak's gonna win it. That's what. That's what I think is gonna happen. Dak's ah, gonna win it man. because this. This is. I'm not saying. I'm Tyree Kill. In all honesty, it should, it should go to Tyree Kill. In all oh, honesty, yeah. it should. I'm just it saying how the voter, the voters will work because. If Dallas closes out the year like 13 and four, one of the top two seeds, and and Dak is doing what he's doing, they're going to be like, oh, Dak or Brock Purdy, we're giving it to Dak. Because Dak is a part of America's team, and that's like, yeah. that's the yeah. mantra that they're going to go with. Not saying that they should, but I think it's what they're going to do. And, he, and he's had a great year, but Tyreek yeah. Hill is, in all ob- objectivity, he's been the best this year. Yeah, excellent point. I mean, I don't want to give it to Dak just because. I want to wait until like the full on simple because he he'll get in a groove and then the end of the season, especially in this month, which he's 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 better this year. The month of December is his Achilles heel. I don't know what it is for Dak when it comes to December is his Achilles heels. I want to see the full ensemble of this of the, the end of this year. Obviously, you'll have some some playoff games um, like late December, early January. So I want to see. What he does for the full month, I won't give it a Brock Purdy because Christian McCaffrey, uh, Samuel, Debo, there, Sammy, all, yeah, there are all these Jack y'all, yeah, these Jack receivers who are probably top ten, top fifteen in, in yards after catch is giving him these opportunities to have these big, you know, big, big numbers and stat lines, right? So yeah. I don't want to give it him the most. The most influential player and the best player this year is hand down Tyreek Hill. But yes. in in history, wide receiver has never won. They don't it. get it. I want them to change history and give it to Tyreek Hill. It has, at some point, a wide receiver has to be deserved. There's been a lot of Hall of Fame wide receivers, a lot of great wide receivers that had amazing seasons and got duped. There's there's time to there's give time Hill. There's yeah. time for it. But if if Dak continues and, and plays well the entire month, then for sure Dak Prescott should get the MVP. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and now getting to the end of Bills Chiefs and, and how Buffalo c- could possibly get into the postseason. The Bills won twenty to seventeen on the road, and obviously, man, the the pass from from Mahomes to, to Kelsey, which was then lateral to Kadarius Tony. Yeah, it, it was one of those plays that you're like, man, that was just that was ridiculous. It, it was it had the whole the whole stadium jumping. It was obviously yeah. one of those plays that that could have been easily top five of the year but then Kadarius Tony does the the, un, the unpardonable <laughs> the pardonable same I just not you can't even see the football when he's lining up it's like yeah he is so off sides it's like just blatantly, blatantly in front yeah, of exactly you. Blatant, it's, it's, right. it's just blatantly in front of you and, and obviously the um Patrick Mahomes frustration at the end um you know what he the argument he was getting, getting to with the refs it was just very it was very different to see Kansas City act like that afterwards especially Mahomes and and Andy Reid based on um Kind of the past when they when they've experienced losses they've been very just like hey like this is this is what happened we, we'll get better but yeah. it was more so they're like hey this is the worst like yeah. even Mahomes to Josh Allen said man that was the worst call ever and, and that was a bad look for him because I'm like hey you gotta Josh Allen has had a lot of losses uh, <laughs> has had a lot a lot of losses to you and you can kind of like at least at least say good game and keep 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 it going mm-hmm. but I do under I do un- I'm, I'm, I'm understand the frustration on, on Mahomes part because of especially uh, uh, because of that Packers non-call before the week and him thinking like oh this is a build-up the refs are like not give, going on our side what right. did you think about the end of that game and just you know also the, the 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 critique of the officiating well i i don't like a lot of these analysts especially stephen a smith it's a lot of guys that is a laundry list of people that went after patrick mahomes character and i really thought that it was it was short-sighted a bit because he has this imagery that they've created NFL has created and possibly him created for himself that, you know, he always takes the high road 
But people forget that this guy is a competitor. He's human. And he was extremely upset because there's an opportunity for them to win, which was an amazing play, amazing. <clears throat> excuse me, that could have been stopped before that. And they still have an opportunity to, if it's like a five yard penalty or whatever, they still have an opportunity to go down and still call another play. Right. So there's a lot of frustration within that. Do not attack a man's character because out of one game, out of his entire career, even when, you know, Scantley dropped that winning touchdown pass, what did he do? He took the high road. Maybe I should have did this. Maybe I think a lot of people are, it's, I think it's the same intensity of Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. Rock. Yeah. Because Will Smith has this imagery that he's created throughout his career that he always takes to high row. He's not a goody two shoe guy, but he has the, the nice imagery. And when he snaps, it was like, Oh, what's going on with Will? No, I think it's the same thing with Patrick Mahomes. We have to give him leeway to be able to be a player and an individual. Yes. You're the face of an organization, but everybody has an opportunity to blow up. And I think people were so hard on Patrick Mahomes because they never seen it before. And it was like, I lost all respect for him. Then you didn't have respect for him in the beginning. <laughs> How do yeah, you lose respect? And that's the thing, on. like, and, and that's and, and that's such a great point because um I am in no way insinuating that, oh man, like I lose all respect for Mahomes. No, because he's human. He's a competitor. I I, I kind of find it weird if he was just if he was just like not going crazy at all after a play like that. Cause I'm like, hey, like, does anything affect you? Like, can you show some emotion? Like he was showing, like, yeah, like I know I'm I'm the cool guy most of the time, but this right. is kind of this is frustrating. You know, I'm doing everything I have to do, but there are things not going our way. Our receivers, obviously, he's not going to say that, but his receivers, they're not playing up to the, to the level. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're not. This isn't the same team. And so to actually see him do that, um, I think it just caught people off guard because they're like, oh, my goodness, like, he's the go- he's the new golden boy now. He's supposed to like yeah. be the, the perfect image. Like, we can't see, we can't let our kids see a guy do this. But it's like, he didn't say he was. <laughs> but the, the crazy thing about... Tom Brady has had so many blowouts on the mm-hmm. sideline. Mm-hmm. Nobody said anything about his character. Nobody said they lost all respect for him. Even when yeah. he was going against Mc, Mc, Josh McDaniels several times on the sideline, going back and forth, or his offensive line, nobody said – they said something, but it was not on the terms of I lost respect for him or he right. embarrassed himself. None of that – none of that narrative. Do not do that with Patrick Mahomes, who has taken everything on the chin. He we should he's he's allotted at least three blow ups oh, in yeah. his entire career. And I think everybody did not give him that opportunity to blow up and be an individual, which is crazy because if anybody else, I would have did the same thing. You gonna hear me. That's bull crap. I understand it for offense. I mean, on defense, you don't tell the defense where they're they're close to the line of scrimmage, it's different. But when a wide receiver has to point on and off for the uh for formation, it's different. Yeah. If he point, which he did, he pointed and say, I'm on you as a referee should say, Hey, back up. It's di- and I think Richard Sherman said that it was like, well, if defense, they don't tell him, tell us when we're all sides, it's different. Y'all have to tell the referee if you're on an all four formation, then it's a legal formation. So I saw I think- Dan Orlowski, I saw Dan Orlowski on NFL live say that he, he pointed out five plays where, um, where it, it was Kadarius Tony was literally offsides. The refs didn't say anything. Yeah. Like literally five plays. They see him and then this play, they're like, nah, offsides. So he's yeah. like, okay, like you guys, you guys weren't walking the line. You guys weren't consistent either. So there is some accountability on their part as well. Right. And this is not the first time. I think it was another big play. I think it was the Bills. They were on the goal line. Uh, I think it was like the five yard line and it was the same situation, but they threw the flag late and say he was offside, and the ref, the wide receiver pointed at the referee saying, like, I'm good, and, and the referee said, yeah, and then he threw the flag. So this is not the first time. There has to be some type of repercussion for the glitches of referees. That's a big play. That gets them in a hunt to be cl- either clinch their division or in a running to clinch a playoff spot. All these games, and that's a, that's a, you know, that's a division rival. So all these games matter. Those glitches, those mistakes by referees have to have some accountability. And I think that's what Patrick Mahomes and um, Andy Reid was trying to convey. Obviously, they didn't do it in a way that was, you know, deemed polite. Yeah, deemed respectful. But come <laughs> on, man. 
Pat, and you never hear Andy Reid complain, and you never Ever. hear Patrick Mahomes complain. So why he's talking about they embarrass themselves? Yeah, that's crazy to me. Give just, them leeway. Give yeah, them leeway. leeway. Shut up. Stephen A is just getting on. He has been getting on my nerves the past three years. I used to look up to this man. Bro, I like is, Stephen A a lot. I like. Stephen oh, a lot. he's a piece of doo doo, man. I love the Steve, Stephen A. Smith show. <laughs> that show is okay. Bro, his podcast is so trash, bro. It's so so trash. <laughs> You are um, but, corny. Stephen A is corny, bro. He's cornball, <laughs> bro. He's corny. You heard it first from Savon's corner. Yeah, Stephen bro. A's a- <laughs> corny, A's bro. A Stephen A is corny, bro. He's corny. Uh, another interesting thing about Kansas City, though, before we move on, Mahomes has never played a road playoff game in his career. And this might be the first time ever that 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 we see that. Which I I honestly look. I'm I'm gonna say this. The Chiefs anywhere. If you got fifteen, you got a shot. And I, yeah. so when people are saying, "Oh man, yeah. they're they're not gonna have," I'm man. We did the same thing with Brady. Brady, any play, any time, any place. If you got him, you're good. And I think the same thing with Kansas City. Obviously, they they have to make improvements, but with the championship experience that they have, even on the road, I still think they'll have a shot. Of course, they went to the Super Bowl in two thousand. Well, it was 2020, 2021 with the offensive line that got exposed. In the in the in the Super Bowl, but they made it all the way there with that offensive line. Because 15 extend plays and he does what he does. Like you said, if 15's on there, they got a chance. Healthy or not healthy, we've seen him countless times, messed up ankle, throw a pass in the Super Bowl. I've never seen another quarterback do. Oh my goodness. When 15's there, it's hard to bet on him. It's hard to bet against 15. Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and now getting to our, to our next topic with the Giants win over Green Bay. Uh, New York won 24-22. to 22. Tom, Tommy, Tommy DeVito let a clutch drive to set up a Bullock's winning kick. And this is the type of game, man, I, man, I'm, I'm a, I was I was expecting y'all to, to, to rack up another win, not be 6-7. and There's a 6-7 and seven crew. There's like three or four teams that are 6-7, and seven, like, it, like dead, deadlock. Um, to you, what did you think about the end of this game? And I mean, it, w- it was missed opportunities, obviously. But Tommy DeVito for the Giants, he's kind of been a, a running theme, uh, like I have a have a been very current in terms of yeah. what the run he's been on, improving the Giants' offense. Uh, what did you kind of think about the game overall? <laughs> the injuries in our secondary, and and our secondary has plagued us for so many years. We've put everybody we can think of in that secondary. They've had big moments and they've had some scratching head moments. That last draft was a scratch head moment. And we had a punt returner back there. We got a practice squad guy that came up. We got somebody that worked at the concession stand two weeks ago <laughs> back there. <laughs> and it's not like we're not getting pressure. It's just, and then I started linebacker Quay is out. We have some, like there's a lot of missing pieces on that defense and that's no excuse. Next man up, they had an opportunity to, to seal the game in the game. They let them drive down. Hats off to DeVito, man, finding a way. And I think his his speed is super, stupid, blah, sneaky, stupid, sneaky. How about that? <laughs> stupid, sneaky. Uh, I, I'm impressed at how he extend plays. I think that's the biggest thing when you're a quarterback in NFL. Yeah. A lot of pocket passers are it's, – it's becoming extinct to me because you have to extend plays even, even – uh, Phillip Rivers had to extend plays. Yeah. Eli sometimes had to extend plays. So this is the way the, the I think NFL is going. You have to be a two way two way quarterback. You have to be able to run. You have to be able to extend plays. You have to yeah. be able to step in the pocket too, but mostly extend a play. So I think Devito was really good at that. Um, what threw me off was his his uh, agent. <laughs> you know he dressed. Uh, I know he. He has cannolis in his for Oh, he's definitely got the cannolis. For sure. Leave, Cano- leave, leave the gun and grab the cannolis. <laughs> they said in Godfather. <laughs> he's definitely, definitely living that life. He's living absolutely, that life. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. For sure, bro. But no, man. I mean, that I think that's the difference. Because the whole game, it was it was dog fight. And then it just lets me know how young Green Bay it still is. They haven't been in those big moments to be able to, to win it out. No veteran presence. I mean, obviously you got Campbell, the defense, but he's in and out. But there's no veteran presence that that anybody has like one big games, right? right? So I think that plays a role. They don't know how to pull through in certain games because all this season we've had like some close, close ball games, especially with Atlanta Falcons. Um, 
uh, with <laughs> with the Broncos. Like it's a <laughs> lot of close games that were there, but it's just a little bit that as that is needed, and the injuries do not help. But the Giants, I mean Saquon Barkley look look decent, and then I think the running game is working, and Devito extended plays. I think. That it's works, man. They yeah, got a good formula. Works. They kind of got a good a good formula that, that's working for them right now. Tommy DeVito with uh, the the Sopranos Godfather agent. <laughs> Leave the gun. Grab the cannoli. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and before we get to our next topic, I, I did a recently. I, I just I just randomly wrote some notes down of teams that can win the Super Bowl. I did I did six teams. I got San Francisco. Oh, okay. Dallas. Okay. Baltimore. Okay. Philadelphia, okay, Kansas City, and Miami. Those, those are my Miami. sixteen that can win it. That I think that, that can have win to, the Super Bowl. That can win the Super Bowl. Who, who do you disagree with? Who, who would you who would you leave off that list? I'll leave off 49ers. And people you don't, don't think, think I'm crazy. You don't think they, I don't think they can win it? The 49ers disrespect has to No, stop. bro, it's not that. It has to stop. It's recent, bro. It's this is why this is why I say that, and I'm going by history. I'm right. going by every quarterback that has took the reins of this high power offense who have s- the similar weapons. Only thing different is Christian McCaffrey. I mean, they had Jared McKinnon and Muster at certain points when they had Jimmy Garoppolo and, you know, Trey Lent. Like, they've been to this spot where they can't get over the hump. They've been to NFC championships. They've been the, they've been in the Super Bowl, Super Bowl. came yeah. up short. So there is, when it matters most, I don't think Brock. Purdy. And again, I don't think he's an elite clutch quarterback. I don't think so. When Debo Samuel was out, when Christian McCaffrey had his watch come, they, he had struggled a lot. And when Trent Williams is down, I understand that, but he struggled a lot. I just don't think he can get them over the hump when it matters most. If it's fourth quarter, it's 30 seconds, 45 seconds to go. He has to drive them down the field and win. I don't think he can. Look, Jimmy Grappolo had the same, same M.O., that he they could have won the Super Bowl did not happen. I just don't think they have the quarterback situations enough to get you hear that, Brock. Home. You hear that, Brock? I hope he does. No, I agree no. with Cam Newton. I agree <laughs> with Cam Newton. He's a game manager. We talked about this. So you think Brock Purdy is an elite quarterback who can take them I to don't. the Super Bowl? I don't. But okay. the team he's got around him is ridiculous, and they got a Bro, bunch of weapons, and they can do. They damage. had that so many times, Willington. <laughs> but health, health last year is what hurt them. That's no, what bro. Hurt. I'm I talking really about so. when they went to the Super Bowl, when they went to the NFC okay, Championship. Okay, against Kansas City as well. So uh, Jimmy yeah. Garoppolo and Brock Purdy are the same quarterback, system quarterbacks. You see the difference when when Jimmy Garoppolo wins the Raiders. He's not the same. He's used to the quick throws. It's not the same. He's a system quarterback. Brock Purdy's the same way. Same MO, bro. I'm telling you. They had the weapons around them those years. Defense as well. That's why I'm not, co- I'm not confident in them that in Brock Purdy, that he can lead this team and win a Super Bowl. I just can't have it. I just can't believe We're just it. just on opposite sides. And I'm, I'm yeah. thinking the 49ers go to Super Bowl. I'm, I'm just going to stop. That's I'm insane. Gonna... <laughs> that's gonna, insane. <laughs> Again, that's insane. <laughs> but you're going with Philadelphia, who you have doubted. <laughs> but I'm loyal to Green Bay. But I'm confident. <laughs> you're confident. I'm confident. <laughs> In the if Eagles. I said Dallas, that would be crazy because I would be trusting a team that that has let let you down year after year. That would be crazy. If I picked Dallas, I I would understand you saying. Crazy. I think Dallas can. I, I was I was going to choose uh, 49ers. You said Miami, right? I also said Miami. Yeah, yeah, Miami won't win it. I think they can get there. I should say they can. I think I think they can. Who possibly can get, get there? I, I should say possibly get there. Not, They're still not, off. Baltimore's better. Got- Baltimore's yeah, better. that defense is going to get them in trouble. And then we've seen countless times defensive coordinators get the upper hand on, on uh, I forgot his name. Tua. The, no, 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 no. The 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 head coach. Oh, the head coach. Um, shoot, Daniels. No, is it Daniels? <laughs> is it Mike? Um, yeah, not Mike Daniels. Is it- Mike McDaniels. I think so. Why am I, I so Miami's coach? I'm sorry if I'm missing your name. Up. <laughs> I don't know. I got his face in my head. Yeah, I, me too. With the glasses and yeah, like <laughs> the weirdo, <laughs> the weirdo, the IT guy. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> really, bro. Can I fix your computer for you? <laughs> Even how he locks his door is just like extremely weird, bro. Like I watched a video of going into the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> I just know, but no, Miami. 
would make it 49ers. No, okay, if we're saying who could get to the Super Bowl, 49ers could get they to the Super Bowl. They can get to the Super Bowl, yeah. But you said who can win. I thought you were saying who can win the Super Bowl. I should have, yeah, I titled that wrong. Teams that can get to the Super Bowl, those six teams. I okay, think then that changes yeah. things. Uh, Ravens won't get to the Super Bowl. Miami won't get to the Super Bowl. Um, oh, that's that changes things. I, you, I, think, I, you, think it's only, you think it's only like three teams that actually have the ability to win it this year? No, there's more. I think this year is for the first time there's more teams that are like, you know, we, we got the regular ones, but there's other teams who can get, like, who can win. I do think the Chiefs still have an opportunity to win the Super Bowl. Uh, I do. 49ers can get to the Super Bowl, but I don't think they're going to win the Super Bowl. Eagles, I think Dallas is playing like they can get to the Super Bowl and possibly even win it. This might be the year that crazy. Prescott is playing real Vegas. football, but I don't want to jinx anything. What happens in Vegas? Because, Vegas <laughs> yeah, I mean, if Dak finishes month off with no interceptions, great QBR, running game working. But this is mm-hmm. also leading up. This is also leading up to like the if they if he gets the MVP, this is leading up to the worst down forever. The Bro. the MVP of the league loses in the second round. <laughs> They're gonna the media's gonna kill him. <laughs> oh my goodness! But yeah, I, if this is the first time, I'm I'm confident in Dak's play, man. I thought he was yeah, gonna he's killing like it. yeah make a lot of mistakes against the Eagles, but man, that defense. I don't know what's wrong with that defense, man. They give up so many points and yards. Oh my goodness. Monster. Nobody can hold him. Even Darius Slave is having trouble. And now we're going to our next topic with, with Jaden Daniels winning the Heisman. Uh, he became the third ever Heisman winner from LSU and had 3,500 passing yards and rushing yeah, yards this him. year. The first, and, the, and this is the time where, hey, I'm going to give Savon his flowers. He was right. When, I, when I'm right, I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> he was definitely right. Even, even Trenton, a, a good friend of the show, he's a big LSU yeah. fan. I told him on Twitter, man, you were right about that. Because I had Michael Penix Jr. He, he had Jaden Daniels from the jump. Um, to, to you, what did you think about this win for him? And also, like, man, he's even though they, they weren't, you know, didn't get a double digit win or, or make it to the playoffs, he had a phenomenal year. He was impactful for them and everything yeah. that, that they did. It was it was attributed to, to his success. Yeah, and, that, and that's what a Heisman winner or candidate should be who changes the outlook of the entire game. And Jaden Daniels does that. He had a crazy stat line that I said last week. 80% of his plays are either a first down or a touchdown. I've Crazy literally stat. never heard that in my entire life for any player or offense, bro. Yeah. That's insane. That's insane. So he's every facet of the game in an offense, he excels at. And I looked at Michael Penix Jr. Uh, obviously, you look at Bo Nix. You look at these guys. They are not on the level of Jaden Daniels and what he was able to do with LSU. With the batter LSU team, who's still coming off. I don't think they recovered from that loss against Florida state in the first week. There was that, that defense did not recover and in his show. Yeah. But if it wasn't for Janie Daniels, they would never be in these ball games or win these ball games. He literally destroyed these guys by himself. (laughs) Single handedly. (laughs) Literally bro. They say one person can't change the outlook of a game. Oh, excuse you, sir. And Jaden and Daniels did so yep. he deserved it. Once I knew they were they let him in, I was like, Yeah, they, he he has to win. There's no other quarterback or player who's had that type of season, that crazy stat line, who changed the outlook of his team more than Jaden Daniels. Hats off to him, man. Hats, yeah. hats off to him, bro. Like to do that. And even I mean, it, you, you rarely kind of see it with the eight and four team, but with what he yeah. was doing, the Everybody, the voters, are like, hey, we can't deny this. We cannot yep. deny this at all. He, he, he is more, more than, more than deserving of it. Um, and now getting to our next topic with, with the Lakers winning the in season tournament, in season tournament champion Lakers, show them respect, name them properly, <laughs> pronounce them as they are. T- <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they beat the Pacers 120, 123 to one hundred nine. Anthony Davis had a monster game with forty one points and twenty rebounds, um, and you know Davis also shot sixteen of twenty four. I'm going to be honest, man. Davis, if you're not going to do this in May or June, I don't want to ever hear about this that line again. you. I'm Thank sorry, man. You. I'm so sorry. Thank Why you. are you bringing this aggression to a, a game that is not even going to amount to anything? You got the Kobe face. You're, 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 you're locked in. And I'm like, you could be doing this 
this is the frustration. And obviously they played great. I'm not going to take anything away from what they did. But the thing in the back of my mind that I kept going to, I was like, he could do this every night. He yeah. literally could. Yeah. I'm not saying we expect you to do for, but like you could put up numbers like this, crazy numbers, because you have it in you and we, we see it. Like we, we literally see it. And now it's like back to, they, they, they blow, you know, lose to Dallas, barely beat, <laughs> barely beat San Antonio. Have a thir- yeah. San Antonio has a 30 to 0 run. I'm like, back to the, back to normal Lakers. <laughs> back to the normal Lakers. <laughs> this is what I'm saying, bro. This is the this is the the effect of having an in season tournament. These you get especially if you're a Lakers fan or any other fan like a Pacers fan. Like bro, these guys are playing lights out, and then after that it just declines. Crash. But I I see what they're trying to do. The same that the in season tournament, whoever wins it has a spot in the playoffs regardless of what happens. I think that's stupid. Because what if that team is it like... It, it would give, an incentive, it'll give a lot of incentive. Give like, a lot of incentive. A lot of incentive. But then, are you going to play... Do the play-in tournament too? That's going to conflict because yeah, if that... That almost cancels the play-in tournament. It's almost like, why do we even have a play-in tournament anymore? Exactly. You know? So now it's going to change a lot of aspects of the playoffs in teams that are, need to get into the playoffs. But, yeah. And now LeBron's hurt. And it makes and and, and <laughs> it makes you wonder. It really makes you wonder because a lot of people because a lot of people are saying, "I'm going to tell you, man. The fact that LeBron <laughs> is still playing this, yeah. is still playing that way against, especially against Zion, who is <laughs> so bad for Zion. He's been getting oh crucified. man, yeah. Stephen A. Bro, we're in on buddy, bro. I, that's so disrespectful. <laughs> so disrespectful, bro. But I'm like. Also, Zion, you got to come with it, man. You got to come with it. He looked like unenthused going yeah, bro. against LeBron and AD. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna at, do at it. some point, at I'm some point, do it. You know, what? I'm not going to say it because I'll be, I'll be on Stephen A's level. I was going to be like him dribbling out of court thinking about, dang, I wonder when <laughs> Wish <laughs> come close. <laughs> Can I make it? Oh, my God. <laughs> <If> I- <laughs> <laughs> if I drive fast enough, this game be the end. Like he, like when he was dribbling up the court, it looked, it did seem like it took forever. He has somebody to wait on. He has somebody that was waiting on him. <laughs> what am I talking about? Somebody waiting on him. <laughs> like she's hope they give my table blowing up. up my phone. <laughs> right, bro. He was thinking about everything but basketball. <laughs> but he got to get a bag, bro. He has to get a back. He doesn't have one. And we, we talked about this too, man. He doesn't. It's like he has well, like Giannis two did. moves. That's why Giannis, Giannis got a back. Yeah. And he's working on his three-point jumper. I think Zion has to really. I don't. I'm not giving up on Zion. I don't think he's a bust. I think he's still a good player. But his focus is not on basketball. His focus is not on basketball, bro. Speaking of somebody's focus is not on basketball, Draymond Green. <laughs> this man wants to go into MMA. Oh, he was point. like, he was like, hey, hey, wait, I did not mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. I was bro. accurate, but I didn't mean. Hey, if you didn't mean to do that, you wouldn't. You would have checked on him. But hey, man, like Nurk, you good? You good, bro? He and then Nurk was like, then that. Nurk was like. That brother needs help. <laughs> right. He deserved to be suspended indefinitely. Indefinite. Indefinite. He deserved that. Man. First, you choke out Rudy Gobert. Okay. And then, less than three weeks later, you're back hitting somebody. Bro, like that was just accident. nothing led up to that, too, bro. Like he was just like, you know what? I got a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> you're next. Bro. No, <laughs> he's trying to open up a dojo, bro. That's what I think, bro. He's trying to open up a dojo. He's playing a different sport. He's playing a yeah. different sport at this point. He's, Draymond, he's trying to do karate at this talking point. To, Draymond, we're tired of talking about the same. We're tired of yes, talking bro. about the same issues. And and, and another thing, like he, we shouldn't, we shouldn't at this point of his career, especially when he's getting to the later stages, we should be talking about how great of a, a defensive player Draymond skill is. Like, not saying this is going to completely eradicate his legacy, but at some right. point, you got to be like. You want to be remembered for what you did in those championship years and what you did defensively rather than this. And this is like starting to overshadow what yes. you did in those prime Golden State years. Yes. And then it overshadow why they re-signed you. Like, if you're going to be a distraction and do these things, you're, you're now 
officially considered an old head, bro. Old heads, we talked about this too. Well, it's in pull shorts, hit you for no reason, just do crazy things on the court and side best. You're not focused on basketball either. Like, there's no excuse for that. Now, when you choke Rudy Gobert, okay, you were defending. You can make the argument you're defending your, your teammate, all these things. But this was a blatant, flagrant to eject Sean. Like, for no, it didn't, nothing builds up to it. So, I don't think, obviously, what you say, it doesn't take tarnish. His, his tenure and his career, but it does starting to overshadow the greatness that you, you've done. Now you're just resorting to these antics. It, it feels like, bro, you worse than Luce Brewell. He choked his coach. Man, but what? It, <laughs> it takes me back to when you look at 2016 Draymond in that OKC series, bro, like athleticism, moving quick, facilitating Tating, even yes. knock down threes yes it's like i was like this was great that i, I was looking at back at those six, i'm like who is this guy like right it's <laughs> like this is a completely different guy it, like when he was making those technical fouls the play was overshadowing that because like, oh draymond's gonna bring it we know he's got yeah. that, that that issue but now the play is no the plays the plays not at that not at that level anymore so no. now it's just like these issues these tantrums <laughs> That's what's gonna. That, that's what's gonna get spotlighted. <laughs> yeah, and now you're indefinitely. Now you're just collecting the check. Now you can't help your team. Whatever you was doing, I mean, this year I don't think they should have resigned. I think they should let him go. Yeah, they should have let him go. Man. Steph Curry is upset. Clay Thomas got tired. got benched. Are we seeing the end of the Warriors, bro? This this the end. Yeah, Clay should have been left. Twenty twenty two was the last year. Yeah, I don't think they'll. I don't think they come back from this. Um, and now we're getting to our next topic with our Orlando Magic's current success. They're currently second in the East in 16 and 7. And Cole Anthony has just really settled into his role as the Magic six man and was a major part of their nine game winning streak. Their bench is averaging oh. a, league, a league best 47.3 points. And this is kind of something that we're seeing um, in the league this year. Younger teams are like higher in the ranks, like Minnesota, OKC, they're top three in the West. Now, Orlando, uh, top two. What has kind of impressed you the most about this team? And also, a bench is so important. Yes. Like if you have that component, you can like you can have long lasting runs in the postseason, maybe not get extremely far, but like be a competitive type of young and upcoming team. What has kind of stood out to you the most about this team? I think they're starting to trust each other because they were the laughing stock last year and the year before. And then, then you go get um I always get his his name. Paolo Paola Paola <laughs> I The kid's a baller, bro. I see why he went number one. And then Cole really Anthony. I think Cole Anthony coming off the bench, adding that uh switch of pace uh with the with the switch up the lineup. And they and then I feel like who still hasn't got his flowers in what he was able to do and turn his career around because a lot of people forgot about it. You know this Markel Fultz. He's yes. been playing last year. He was playing lights out. This year, you know, some injuries are playing him. I think he's still playing good ball. They have a nice bench, and they have a, a old school guy. I won't call him old school, but they have a veteran in Joe Ingles as well. That uh, I think he comes off the bench too. He hasn't got many playing time, but I think him that presence and he Ingles used to shoot the rock, bro. When he, I think he was with the the Jazz, if I'm not Ass. mistaken. Oh my god! Yeah, when he was with the Jazz, bro, he used to. He used to shoot the shoot the, the lights out. But I do think with uh Benchero leading the pack and them having a nice bench, Markel Fultz, Cole Anthony, this young squad. And I think Orlando has been so patient because they haven't been back to a NBA championship or made a playoff run since Dwight Howard left in Turkulu and Jameer Nelson and and uh AJ Reddick. JJ Reddick. Um shoot, Nelson. I, I forgot the other guy who looks like who was used to guard Kobe all the time? Forgot his name, Pinterest or something like that. Michael P. Mike Michael Petrus. Yes, Petrus. Bro, thank that, you. Yeah, such a good unit, man. Yes, yeah, low a key unit. was a dog, the good dog. But they they've been patient, rebuilding. I do think they should have they should have kept um b- uh Bolo whatever his name is uh Bobo <laughs> Bobo Bobo. 
<laughs> Ebola. Oh. Save also there was so much hesitancy. He was like, hey, Wellington, you gotta can help out. <laughs> Please. Nah, I think they should have kept him. I thought he was coming off the bench. I think he was, he's not doing anything with the Suns. He's just riding the pond. I think he could have like at least 15, 16 minutes and he'll give them some buckets and have a defensive presence. I thought they should have kept him, but they let him go. Whatever. But no, this this young core rebuilding, and I think Machero is is a guy that you can build around and could be the face of organization. Obviously, he's showing that sure. that he was worth every month, every penny, and every money. Stop licking that, please. Sorry for all the dogs. <laughs> And now we get to our next topic with, with uh, Bronny's first game in USC. Obviously, this past Bronny. Sunday, the, the, the huge, huge line he made his made his debut coming off the bench and finished with four points, three three, ra- three rebounds, two assists, two steals, and and one block MVP? that was very very reminiscent of of, of his dad. Uh, yeah. Chase down block, chase down block. <laughs> yeah, two feet though. He came off two feet though. Yeah, <laughs> Bronny couldn't um, coming on one. Yeah. Oof. Man, those chase down blocks from LeBron earlier in his career, man. Different. Man, yeah, Different. Man. <laughs> staple. But, but, but when you look at at what Bronny, um, you know, obviously that major scare in the past offseason, we talked yeah. about that, and that was, how that was just just so concerning. Um, what did you kind of think? You know, seeing him back and, and just fully healthy, which is the biggest, you know, uh, biggest uh, takeaway, and and what he can do this year. He looked comfortable. Yeah, he looked light. He looked like he was hungry. He was at um, home. Yeah, for sure. And I and eventually I hope that he, you know, gets in the starter lineup and gets more minutes. Obviously, you want to ease him back into it. That's that's a huge I mean, it was like uh it happened in June, July. In June, yeah. Yeah, June. So I mean you still have to, you know, weigh him in a little bit and, and get him acclimated. But I thought he looked good. That chase down block really let me know that he he got some stamina. He can he can go back and forth. He he, he yeah. can um uh, he can do a lot of things. Uh a couple missed shots. But that that comes with not being able to you know get the feel of the game and not being able to play a lot. But I think he has a is a, a good future. Obviously, their season is not going as planned. <laughs> but I think if he would have started off playing, I think obviously that'll be different because I think he's a guy. Obviously, yeah. he can facilitate really well. He can run. I think when he's in the game, they can they can do the transition offense and, and get buckets that way. I think that's what USC wants to do, anyways. But they don't have the players to be able to do it. I think when Bronny gets there, I think he's going to be fine. I think he'll, he'll average like 15, 16, maybe six assists, two steals a game. I think that's, I think get, that's good enough to get him to the, into the NBA lottery. It's the NBA lottery. <laughs> yeah. I think that's good enough. He'll be like, we'll, we'll, we'll let you slide through. We'll let you slide right. through, Bronny. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't have to do like, for me, I don't want Bronny to be like this guy who averages 26, 20. No, I think he's a, an actual student of the game and wants to facilitate to get his you know teammates involved, but he can knock down the three really well. I think he can finish at the rim. I think coming in, I think he's going to be like a calling Sexton coming out, mm, you know, when he went to the Cavs. Good comparison. I think they have the uh, same flow, but eventually you see how Colin Sexton has come into the zone and become a better player in an all around evolved point guard. And I think I think Bronny should play point guard. I think that should be his position. I think he's a shooting guard, right? Yes, shooting guard, yeah. spot spot up shooter. But I think yeah. that point guard position seems probably yeah better, a better especially fit for him. yeah mm-hmm. definitely. Um, and now getting to our to our first album review with Nicki Minaj's Pink Friday too. Um, in her new and fifth fifth album, this project has an extensive uh, track list. It's, it's packed with a, with a lot of features. The album starts with with the with the reflective intro, surveys triumphs and tragedies. Plus, has a lot of um, commercial hits in it. Um, and man, this is this is an album that was been it's been talked about a lot. It's been yeah. talked about a lot. Um, mm-hmm. Twenty two tracks in it, and I, and I feel as though with Nicki, she's gonna she's gonna put out a long album. I wouldn't expect a concise project from Nicki because of the commercial star that star that she is. And I think it has a lot of a lot of good moments in it. It's not a perfect <laughs> album. I yeah. think it has the it has the hits that she's gonna like that that everybody won with, with Lil Uzi Bird. That's gonna go crazy. The the track with J Cole. Yeah. Um, to me, there's a lot of songs here that it, it it sounds like a 2010 to a 2011 like a 2011 album, but to me in a good way because like when you're talking about female rappers, I don't think she's still the best one. Fe- Nicki is still the best female rapper right now. I don't think yeah. there's anybody you can't, you can't touch her in that. In that regard, and I feel like this is an album that it sounded like a Nicki album, but she can, to me, for female rap, she's still the queen of it. That was my takeaway. Like, she's still the, fe- the the queen of the queen of female rap. Cardi B can't put an album out like this. Glorilla, any no. of those girls. Like when you no, look at the not. current state, they're not going to do it do it at this level. Uh, what, what were some of kind of your your takeaways of it? 
not this much versatility. You know, I say I'm off Nicki Minaj because I think my ears for her has, you know, deteriorated because I like a, I used to be a big fan of Nicki because the way she, her versatility, the way she um, set up songs, her bars, the way she articulate, like her different flow and cadences that she can to pull out the hat. Her versatility is unmatched. She's literally one of the best female, ra- well, the best female rap on paper and numbers. But yes. I think there's other female MCs that are better than her at rapping. But Eric. for full ensemble of it, from appearance, not touch yeah, not touch her. She's the best performer, um, imagery, bars, like all around. She's the best female rapper for sure. But there's like MC Light, all these, you know what I'm saying? Like all those female Foxy rappers, Brown. Foxy Brown. Definitely can I think believe can out rap her, but of yeah. the full ensemble of it, nah, nobody's touching Nikki. But this it had it like you said had his moments. I quickly went to um, J Cole and I listened to the Lou Uzi Vert one. There was a couple in there when she was singing. I was like, okay, Nikki's same formula, um, but still the versatility to find different ways to use her voice and you know to sing on tracks. It's all right. You know, 22 songs I thought should have been smaller, but I mean, she has to drop music in a minute, so. Just 15 songs the, is enough. I'll tell you what. You start off with a Billie Eilish sample, I'm locked in. I'm locked yeah, in. I'm not start locked off with in. <laughs> start off with a Billie sample. <laughs> not locked in, sir. Savon's like, like, you're locked in. I'm not. <laughs> I was uh, the whole time. This is for full scope. This is for full scope. This is for oh, full yeah, scope. Oh yeah, I, I know, I know. You are not because man, it's just one of those. When Nikki drops the album, it's gonna get all the attention in the world. Yeah, for everybody, sure. everybody was mentioning it. Mentioning rightfully it, and, so, and I, rightfully yeah, so. Yeah, because, because she definitely d- deserved that hype. Um, but like you said, the the state of the culture has changed for her because. It's almost like she feels as though there's a disrespect towards her because it's like, hey, I'm not getting the same streaming numbers as these other female rappers are. But they, she also has to remember that, hey, like the state of, of music is changing. They're kind of going for younger. Yeah. And she kind of she had her run. I mean, she's still the best, but the marketability, they're going to push for that young. They're going to push for the right. Ice Spice and those types of female rappers right now. You're OG. Just have your OG status. It, it doesn't matter. You've done everything you can in rap. Like you broke everything. numbers. You got more streaming to most men, uh, oh, dude yeah. rappers. So they yeah, wish they bro. could have numbers like that. <laughs> yeah, wish, bro. So yeah, she's she's tripping on that front. She tripping. Um, and now get into our next album review with with Az's uh, truth. Truth be told, um, in his new album, the veteran MC has uh, tracks that are kind of you know filled with elite displays of internal rhymes and a consistent flow. With filled with wordplay. Um, oh, years man. later, he's, he's he's still got just an underrated pen that we witnessed um, uh, since the early '90s. Um, and he he came up in that same route of Nas, Biggie, Jay, all of those kind of like New York rappers that I mean we're we're right there we're we're, we're right there with <laughs> you're giving me a disturbed look. <laughs> What's up? I missed this one. Oh, you missed this one. Okay. <laughs> Cause when you said AC, I was like AC. I don't, I don't remember <laughs> AC been on the list, and then I looked back, I was like, "Oh my goodness!" Nah, you're good. You're good. Nah, I'll give, I'll thing, bro. <laughs> yeah, do your thing, bro. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll give my review on it because it's always interesting. Like even we mentioned with Nas, you know, what yeah. he's able to do at a, at a later stage of his career. AZ, he came in uh, up in the same era as Nas, and he skipped eleven song album, concise, mm-hmm. and it may not be like the most outstanding music of the year, but it's still like, bro, the fact that he can still rap like this and the pen is still sharp yeah. is like, he impressed me a lot. If, if you have the chance to listen to it, I think you would like it because his pen is very strong. He's a very like technically sound rapper and it has that New York, New York vibe to it. So he's, he's is he like, more lyrical or is he more bar heavy? More lyrical. More lyrical. Okay. I like lyrical rappers. We could tell Definitely. a story. Yeah. Yeah. Go into it. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we're Majid Jordan. I know you didn't. Majid Jordan. I know you didn't miss Majid Jordan. Majid Jordan, right? It was. It was okay. It was okay. So, did you, have, I, did you have expectations for it going into it? No, no expectations. But I do. This is what I love about this album: that they did something different. This is not like their their rest of their music. And then obviously they have, um, you know, newly signed, um, you know, bandmate in. Um, uh, Naomi, she's yeah, working. Naomi sharing. She's working. 
So it was similar to her vibe. And then they got into um, some pop. They got into some like, like some different vibes, which I really like. I was like, yes, because, you know, Majid Jordan can get into that little ram or that little pocket they're used to. I think this album is the first time that they were able to be to experiment on a lot of tracks and the different styles of music. I mean, I enjoyed it. It wasn't like a great, great album, but I think the versatility gives it points. I think the creativity within the music gives it point. Some of the music was like, okay, like what's the point of this one? This maybe could have like been kept off or the vibe. It kind of slows down the vibe too much. Like it was certain songs. I'm like, okay, that's cool. But I don't think it enhances your album. I don't think it brings anything to it. I think you just like the sound of it. It's like, okay, we're going to put that in there. But, I mean, it was okay. It late wasn't night. like... It's late night drive music. It's late it, night drive Oh, music. for sure. It's for going sure. crazy on a late night drive. Yeah. <laughs> you and your lady, maybe. You yes. know what I'm talking about? You know? I was yeah. like, yeah. And I was listening to this late at night, and I was like, <clears> this <throat> is a vibe. <laughs> it's a, they, definitely they, a vibe, yeah. though. It's definitely a vibe. Definitely. But, um, mm. Not not the the best for you, obviously, because they put out no. Better, better their work. first album is has been the best album Ooh. they've ever done. Yeah, can't surpass it's, that. Can't surpass no, that. Not at all, bro. <laughs> it was crazy. Um, and I'll get into our next review with, with Tim's uh, new single, "Not an Angel." Um, in her in her second single of the year, are uh, written entirely by Tim's and co-produced by um her SARS. Focus on leaving a one sided relationship. It's powered by Tim's trademark vocal tone and, and strong songwriting. Um, and, and I think that this was a a good. It, it's not a single song, but I, I think it's like, it's going to work on a, um, it's going to maybe I should say not as much as, as, um, the, her last one, me and you only me and you. I think that one was more of like the one that people are going to like listen to more. And I think this one is going to, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a song I like a lot, but I think between the two, only me and you is the one that's probably yeah. going to get more streams. Um, yeah. but still I works though. That. Tim's is yeah. her songwriting, her voice everything just checks boxes um to you what were, what were kind of your takeaways of it now you got me thinking bro like it's in the cusp of that's being a cusp. single song yeah, I, was or, just, I, wasn't, I wasn't convinced like, that's a good point that's a good point it's not a single song now that i think about it did you it's think it was you said that did you think it was yeah before? yeah because it's in the pocket of what she normally drops as a single so i'm thinking like okay it's it has some like resemblance of her you know other singles she dropped and then now you think about it like it will be stronger on an album. Oh, yes. Oh, it's be crazy. stronger like going into another song or being, you know, because Me and You was definitely a single song. And yeah, I think I play Me and You so much. It is more up-tempo, more, 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 uh, little, not earthy, but more, you know, sun, you know, sunrise, <laughs> bird sunrise serpent, vibes. me and you, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but this was more like, it wasn't as, it wasn't dark, but I think this song was more earthy than her normal music. And I don't think, now that you, you changed my mind, well, I said, I, yeah, I agree. It's <laughs> not a single song, but I do think it's a good song for sure, but not a single song. So baby girl, why did you drop this? I mean, we appreciate it. No, yeah, I mean, I'm not, and don't, I'm not criticizing. I like the song a, a lot, but I was yeah. just, you know, we always do our thing about single song or album song. And I was, when I was listening to, it, I was like, first couple of times, I just, I was really enjoying it replayed. And the third time, I was like, wait, is this a single song or yeah. album song? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I, I think this one, I want to be a surprise for it. Like, I want to like stumble upon it through the album or the EP or whatever yeah. you drop it. Like, oh, okay, this is a gem. Now it's like, if I listen to it on the album and it doesn't flow well on the album, wherever you drop this at, then I'm going to be like low key disappointed because you could have saved this for mainly the album or wherever you're trying to do with this song. But she's two for two for this year. Two for two yeah. this year. Yeah, this for sure. Yeah. Really smart. I like where she's headed. Yes, definitely. Um, and I'll get to our. Tyler, what? whatever her name oh, is. Okay. I was getting so much hate for that last week. We were like, yeah, Savon was right. I was like, man, get out of here. Put on my phone. Put on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now again to our last review with, with Jack Harlow and Dave's uh, Stop Giving Me Advice um, in this new track which yes yes I like it I like it a lot Dave killed it Jack Harlow gave a solid verse this worked for me um, yeah. dope dope music I don't know if you saw the music video but dope music video no, and, oh, and, and I, I I really like when when Jack kind of gets in, gets into this bag man like he, he, he can he can he can do a, a smooth flow he can, he can do that yes. smooth flow and it works. He's not trying, he's not trying to do too much. He's like, Hey, I'm just going to be me. And yeah. on this track, he was just trying to be him. And Dave 
it's just there's levels to this man dave is, is like just the the word play the punch lines all that was crazy um to you what kind of stood out to you for this track i like that jack hollow went first i think smart his voice it fit this beat so well and he wasn't, I like the, the cadence he had and how he how he wrote, how he like started it off. And like some points I'm like, ah, come on, Jack. Like, like you could have tweaked that and left a word out so it can flow a little better. So it won't have that extra hump on the 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 cadence bounce or the 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 the, the, the sequence that you had. But that's me nitpicking. But I yeah. think this is was his best cadence voice uh setup of the year. Like sure. this. Literally, like I wanted to like be like, man, it's stupid. Like this is cr- trash. I couldn't hate on him. I couldn't hate no, on him. No, I literally started like I was listening because I was li- I listening again I before we started, before, and, and I was, I was just like, like this one. <laughs> it's like, oh, I want to hate it so bad, but he's dropping <laughs> his butt off. It is sounds so nice. Yeah, yeah, this was yeah. If I don't know if I want a full album like this for him, but I think this really gave me a new perspective on the versatility that he can have on tracks but he doesn't like resemble this or do this in his album I don't do just that? Have... what if he did a full album of this i mean it will have to be he'll have to have features on it but i don't think he can sustain that type of vibe through a whole project his last track was loving on me and that was a pop hit so when i look at what he did then i was like okay he's going to do more of that yeah he's gonna do more of the loving on me i don't think he, i think this was like a just like hey i'm I'm gonna show you I can still rap, but I don't think he's we're gonna get. Yeah, I don't think so this. either. I mean, it was, so I think it was, he's going for another commercial. I think he's going to go, go, go kind of go for another commercial type album, just like nope. the, the the Come Home the Kids. Um, he got like three like big hits. Obviously, um, the one that put him on the map, um, popping. What's popping? Yeah, popping. Yeah. And then um, it's two other ones that he. I know Nail Tech was another one. That, that Nail Tech was one. Oh god. But I don't think nothing will pop, stop, uh, top his what's popping. I mean, it was ABC, but I think the way he did it, the beat go crazy. I mean, it just it just worked. Like it checked boxes with the industry sound. And He's gearing up for another album release. He's clearly gear, gearing up for another. Yeah, album I don't think he should just do an EP. Just do an EP, bro. There's there's nothing. The more and more I look at it, what he did with Jackman was smart. Literally just ten songs, and I mean it. It wasn't. It wasn't like obviously we had our nitpicks with it, but I think that's more of his formula. I think like he may have not executed it well, but the mm-hmm. vision behind it was. I was like, I like, I like the vision behind this because "Come Home, the Kids Miss Me" was like nineteen, twenty songs. It was too much, and it sounded because it was insane. concise. That's why you like yeah. Jack Man because it was concise. I, I did to, to me for me personally because I think he's better in small doses. I think a yeah, bloated I that. a bloated Jack album is gonna get. Yeah, older. it's gonna get re- re- yeah older repetitive. Yeah, Justin Timberlake. Yeah, he had all the just he's he's getting connections now. He's like, oh, I want to put everybody on. It's Body like, on. It it. Really, yeah, I don't want to leave really anybody off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I I, I want to see him do a, a like a, a real concept. You know, like these you know Jack Man, and then he he did one where he had his shirt off in the back porch or whatever. Like that's not a real concept, bro. Like I want to see a like a concept, concept album. You. Yeah, I you do it. I, I, I'm, just, I, I'm not sold on him. I'm just. I'm still not sold on that as the album aspect of him. I know he can yeah. do the singles, but it's just like I want to like. I still haven't heard that album of, album from him. That's just like man, it's undeniable. He doesn't, yes. he doesn't have that yet. Timeless album, and that's uh, what. Before we move, do you think that that tar- not tarnishes, but that's a hit against uh, a rapper's career that like they don't have an album that really is timeless, but they have a bunch of singles. So, are we going to consider him a one hit wonder? To me, he would be if he does. If you don't put together, you. It's all about the albums. Yeah. Not not all because like singles matter. But yeah. If you want to sit in that sit at that table of the elites and the best, mm-hmm. you got to have a good. You got to have a great album. Fifty. He had a great album. Yes. You know what I mean? Like Nas had had it. Has had yes. multiple great albums. Jay Drake. Yes. All these yes. guys. You you got the Wayne. You have to have the albums. Like that's that. At the end of the day, that's what de- separates you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Before we before we close out though, Boz, his album is dropping tonight. Um, SZA is coming out with a new project called Lana soon. It was it was supposed to drop. I, it may it was supposed to drop tonight, but she's coming up with something called Lana. We don't know what it is yet. She said I, soon. She said December, but I, I don't. January. It's, not, it's gonna be January. Yeah. But she's coming with something new. That's surprising. Um, 
which is I don't know. She's kind of starting to push some, push some more stuff out, man. It's kind of it's kind of surprising me. Um, Kanye and Ty Dolla Sign they said today, but they pushed it back. Which we yeah, all they knew. took it off. Yeah, they took yeah, it. They off. took it off, and we knew that was going to happen. Is there anything coming tonight, or maybe the next, maybe in January? That's intriguing you. Joey dropped something a couple weeks ago that we need to drop a single. Yeah, he dropped something oh, with man, a couple other him. guys. Joey, I think he's going to gear up and drop an album here shortly. I'm I'm eager to listen to Boz. Boz going to get played tonight. Mm. First thing, first thing. I was going to play Kanye those because I heard. I mean that like that Westcom sample didn't really get me. I like the they posted a video of him doing uh, yes, Ty Dolla Sign and on. Future. <laughs> That was, I was like, oh my goodness. It sounded, oh. I can't even lie. It sounded, I, I oh. replayed that Sunday like three. I was like, this sounds amazing. Oh. <laughs> Who mixed this? Oh, this is beautiful. My goodness. <laughs> and that gets me hyped. And then he'll do that. And then some of the albums he did, like Donda, like he had some, like he, like, Preview a bunch of great songs. I'm like, man, this one. What is this? What is my this? prediction? My prediction though, there's gonna be some some great song. Not, I'm not gonna say it's, 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 it, bro. But it's gonna be some great. So, some ones are like, yo, this is insane. I think <laughs> I just uh, <laughs> what Ty's underrated in his like being able to write hooks. Oh yeah, he's so he's underrated. Yeah, masterful. And his, I mean, his verses are not like crazy, but they're good too. It's like they're memorable. He finds different pitches, different melodies within. And I think with Kanye being a genius as a producer, those two, I feel Same. like it's gonna be, it's gonna be crazy. Yeah, definitely. I feel like this is gonna be co- maybe the collab of the year if it drops. <laughs> if it drops, we we might have to wait for January. But honestly. From the snippets I heard this past Sunday, some heat, some heat might be on the way. Definitely. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with our Godfather Coda review. <laughs> 